Yo world, this is Fat Man DD1, and I'm glad you joined me today because we will be talking about Black Panther. Yes, we'll be talking about Black Panther. But we're not just talking about Black Panther in the entire movie. We're gonna break it down just a little bit to dissect this movie in a certain way. It's called the Fat Man Breakdown. Welcome to the Fat Man Breakdown. Now we're breaking down a part of the cast that is Michael B. Jordan's character, Aaron Killmonger. Loved this character. He revitalized villains. I'm, I'm, right now, I'm just gonna let you guys know, Marvel villains don't grow on trees. Every time Marvel does something to a villain and they disappear forever, they don't grow on trees. I'm gonna be honest with you, we can't keep going from villain to villain to villain. That's not how the comics work. They stay alive, okay, Marvel? But this, and the direction it took, made Eric Killmonger more human. Oh, by the way, straight up forward, everyone, this is a spoiler review. I will not be doing just review the not spoiler review. I may, may not. It depends how I feel at, at a certain point, but if I want to find all the truth, I'm going to do that. So this is a spoiler review. If you don't want to be spoiled, I'll make a second review for you. If you do want to be spoiled and you're still watching, just, you know, stay watching. Just getting into the spoiler review. If you're still watching me, thank you. All right, now let's get into this. Eric Killmonger's character is an amazing character. Right off the bat, this character is brought forward just fucking incredible. We have we have rage, we have anger, but we have understanding, we have compassion. We have a character that is for the people, you know what I'm saying? Like Wakanda's about being for just Wakandans and the Wakanda nation itself, not being for the rest of the African Americans that came from Africa. Life started there. Eric Killmonger wants to change that formula and wants to change the world. Having black people be on top, be the bullies, be the destroyers, the vendors, to, 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 to basically defeat the white man. But moving forward to this character, we see that he's being blinded. Like a lot of villains have been blinded in the Marvel Universe with just their intentions, but he was broken down more simplified. Not in a way that we will take a villain and just take his head off and be like, well, there's nothing much here, you know what I'm saying? He was a full package of understanding, commitment, and what he believed was right. You even felt for the character at one point. For his moment of being in the museum and looking at all the artifacts that were just taken from its homeland and found, there was a piece of vibranium there. Him working with Claw was kind of like a, an understanding moment. It's like, well, I need you for this so I can put my plan in perspective, which was amazing because him using Claw, element, that element meant something. Everything in this movie meant it had a position to be played. And if it was played, it was played freaking well, I tell you not. Especially when it came down to him coming back to Wakanda, coming back to his father's homeland. Now, we'll get into more of his dad in a couple of minutes, but I'll just break it down for you. As he approaches Wakanda, as he throws them Claw's body, because he basically betrays Claw and yeah, it kind of ends dirty for Claw. You know, he's Claw's dead. I kind of didn't want him to die because I also remember him like being an Ant Man. So I kind of like, oh, he, could we gonna throw him there? But he was Claw's character, by the way. Just a disclaimer: Claw's character was amazing in this movie. Uh, I don't know why. It just felt more. <clears throat> it felt more alive and unique and just fun. Like Claw's character was just fun. I actually wanted more time with Claw. Uh, but we didn't get that. But as he uses Claw, as he kills him, he goes back to Wakanda and presents him to Wakabi. Wakabi's father was killed the first time Claw showed up to Wakanda. And that was always remembered because Wakabi wanted revenge for his father dying. In the comics, it was T'Challa's dad, but now it's Wakabi. And that vengeance, that energy will maybe lead Wakabi to become a villain. It was supposed to be the gorilla guy but that kind of changed. It was supposed to be the man ape M'Baku. M'Baku is a recurring character in the Black Panther comics, right next to Eric Killmonger. More than M M'Baku, Eric Killmonger shows up and shows up and shows up, always in the comics, always coming back to life for some particular reason. Every time he gets killed, but he always shows back up. And for me, I actually like Killmonger's approach because Michael B. Jordan and the fact that the direction, thanks to Ryan Coogler, made this character more human. It, his, 
his resolve was like breaking that Marvel curse upon like all the villains they've had. They've been lackluster, they've been looking amazing in trailers, but they've been kind of like one dimensional and trash. But his character was three dimensional, his character was understanding, you could relate to him. So as he bought the body to, to Wakanda, it was just like, I brought you Ulysses Claw, he couldn't bring you Ulysses Claw, now I need to step on the throne because it's my rightful place. I am the son of such and such. I am your cousin and I want to fight for the role of the Black Panther. And T'Challa was just like, I accept this challenge. So as they do the fight scene, basically Eric Killmonger ends up winning, but he also makes his speech on why and how he got here. And you probably already know this speech. I'm just gonna cut to the clip because it's a good clip. I lived my entire life waiting for this moment. I trained, I lied. I killed just to get here. I killed in America, Afghanistan, Iraq. I took life from my own brothers and sisters right here on this continent. And all this death, just so I could kill you. But moving from, he has all these war dogs placed in certain parts of the world. New York, London, Beijing, China, Japan, everywhere where he has these war dogs. And as he takes over and defeats the Black Panther in combat, he becomes a new Black Panther. He burns the heart-shaped herb. And they really don't explain the heart-shaped herb as being magic, but it is made from uh, the vibranium. The vibranium is the strongest thing about Wakanda and the fact that this vibranium became such a rare commodity and was more of a main staple of the movie in the comics. It has a lot of origins behind it, but they didn't want to dive deep into that. They just used the vibranium as just a substance and the fruit and just this path, all that stuff. And the crazy part is, Killmonger was able to survive ingesting the vibranium. If you can't survive ingesting the vibranium, you are not worthy, and it moves on to the next successor of the family, which would have been T'Challa's sister, and it even mentions that in T'Challa's sister, you should fight him. And she was just like, hell the fuck no, he killed my brother. <laughs> she ain't gonna fight that man. She might die too. The, the fruit will give her the abilities of the Black Panther because she is the next Black Panther. In the comics, his mom and his sister are supposed to be his step parents, but in the movie, they're his real parents. So I was just like, okay, whatever, you know, who cares? Now, if it wasn't more clear, the fact that he's killed and killed and has fought for the right to stand there and fight his own cousin. He wants to be the Black Panther. He believes he deserves this right because his father died because of the Black Panther, because of T'Challa's dad, Wachaka. And Wachaka had to kill his own brother. And that's, see, that's, that's worse because you doing that just it just left an orphan Killmonger. It left him orphan. It left him becoming and moving up in the ranks of the United States government, learning how the Americans think, learning our history, learning everything about us, just, just people in general, and then coming back to Wakanda and sharing that information, him being a spy, a war dog. War dogs were also uh, known in the comics as Panthers and Forcers. Biggest part of the, the comics is the war dogs, and also Black Panther's adopted brother, who is like a white African, he's a white dude. He works for the war dogs, which is kind of cool, right? And even though Killmonger may have like defeated T'Challa during the battle, Zuri, played by Forrest Whitaker, his character was even fleshed out as well, being the main problem why Killmonger is who he is. It wasn't just T'Challa's father, T'Chaka, that turned Killmonger into who he is by killing his father. Basically, long story short, Killmonger's dad was basically sent out to spy on like the world, on the United States and all the Americans living in the slums and the poor, you know what I'm saying? Living, living in like an okay place. But as he was there, there was a second spy, which was Zuri. Zuri was also a spy watching him to make sure he doesn't do anything stupid. And Killmonger's dad told Ulysses Claws, Ulysses Claw, where to attack Wakanda's main, like small vibranium circuit, like where to attack and get the vibranium. And the fact that Zuri told 
Wachaka. Wachaka came to his house and said, listen, I know what you did. And Zuri was like, I'm the snitch. I am Wakanda. And the fact that that happened, he was like, you betrayed me. He tried to, um, Killmonger's father tried to shoot Zuri. It ended up being Killmonger's dad who's dead because of Zuri and T'Challa's dad. And knowing that Killmonger killed Zuri because Zuri was like, I have regret. He's like, all right, you have regret, you gonna die. <laughs> and he killed him. And then he, he thought he killed T'Challa, but that turned into another part of the movie that we're gonna talk about later, but this is just a Killmonger review for now. But the fact that Killmonger was able to do everything he was going to do, he joined special forces, he, he freaking graduated from the highest schools ever, he became better than what people looked at the regular African American. He wanted to help all the black people around the world instead of the people in Africa and Wakanda because he looked at T'Challa like, why are you guys up here sitting comfortable in the lap of luxury? You have all this money and all this power, but you're not using it to help your people. That's fucked up. And it's not. It's the fact that their people are the ones that are there. It's all the fighting that they've done they have kept it to themselves. They've kept their world hidden because if they help the rest of the African world, people, United States, Europe, any other like white nations are gonna look at it as you're trying to take over and you're trying to take us down. And that's what Killmonger wanted. He wanted to take down the people that are at power to put Wakandans and the African people in power because black people look down on it's a true message that was really pushed forward and the fact that his father died for Wakanda and being a spy and I only did my job he, that fueled his effort that fueled him growing up without a father without a mother figure and growing up becoming a soldier becoming a warrior and at the end of it he had a warrior's death you know, he may have understood what he did may have been too much. He was consumed by it almost. Not like the other Marvel characters, but he was consumed by it in rage and anger. You know, even though he also took on the Dermblage, which is like freaking a, a feat that's kind of cool. Like he took them on and he fought them and he, uh, he kind of won. <laughs> Warrior, this fighter, this, this person that wanted to fight for something bigger than himself. He knew his goal was fight for something bigger and was fight for what that purpose is. Because if it wasn't just using Ulysses' claw, if it wasn't using the girl he was with, if it wasn't getting the artifacts and, you know, killing uh, Zuri and, and having help for, um, what's his name? Wakabi? Getting to where he had to be was the goal of the character was the goal of his purpose because his mission was to help everyone that is like him you know his mission was to get that power to have everyone be at a certain place to live like the Wakandans live but his purpose and what he stood for was going against what Wakanda stood for but then at the end of it even when he had a warrior's death T'Challa understood where he was coming from and he sympathized with it and he said you know what you're right Maybe we're doing it wrong. Maybe we should move forward to help and see what we can do. And that was the best part of the movie. That was the best part of the message that no one really got. I believe everyone got that message, but that was part of the message that kind of was glossed over just anger because he was spewing this anger, but he also was, was speaking facts, you know? And that was what caught me at the end of it. He's like, I'm, he's like, when you bury me, just throw me in the ocean, like my ancestors before me. That was just beautiful. And I, that was why I love Michael B. Jordan's character. That's why I love Killmonger. And he made this movie. He made villains. Every villain has to be Killmonger. After this, I need a villain to be three-dimensional. I need them to be relatable because that was what made a villain. The story, the music, the life, the energy. I wasn't going to watch Black Panther and Nashiki. I went in all black <laughs> and gray. But that's what made this villain and movie good. Because of the dimensions, because of the understanding and the story, he was a perfect character. Sad he's dead though.
But if they ever try to bring him back, Killmonger would be an amazing character. Like if, they, if if somehow Thanos brings all of the villains that the Avengers fought back to life in a giant battle, perfect. <laughs> Seriously. But on that note, did you see Black Panther? What did you like about Pan Black Panther? Who was your favorite character? Did you enjoy Killmonger? These are questions I'm asking you because well, it's a non spoiler review and you just watched this. So tell me what you think. Tell me what you want to see next. I'm going to be reviewing the rest of the movie and I'm not going to break down any more characters. I'm just going to move into this. So like, subscribe, comment. I'm Fat Man DD1. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for making this to the end of the video. If you have made it to the end of the video, if you haven't, my bad. <laughs> I should have made it more interesting for you. Uh, thank you very much. Peace and I'm out. She see money all around me. I look like I'm the man, yeah, but I was down and out like that.